Let's see. Okay, we are on. Good morning. So good to see you this morning in the Lord's house to worship with us today. And I just want to go over a couple of things real quick before we begin our time of worship. Just by way of announcements, we will not have Wednesday activities this week. Um, we're getting closer to you know Christmas Day next Sunday. I hope you're ready and, and prepared for that. I'm not sure that I am, but uh, but it, it'll be uh, it'll be here before you know it. Probably still a little bit of last minute gift shopping. Anybody? Yes, Definitely. We're always it's just you know there's always those last minute things that we got to do. But um, it'll be here before we know it, so uh, be prepared for that. Uh, so we won't have Wednesday evening services, but instead on Saturday, Christmas Eve, we are going to gather here and have a Christmas Eve candlelight service. It'll be really, um, j just a, a really great service, not very long. Um, we'll have some music and some scripture reading and just really uh, focus on why we do what we do why Christmas is what it is. And so we'll spend some time focusing on that uh, for a few minutes together and, uh, and have a really just a warm fellowship around, you know, lighting the candles and, and it's gonna be really nice. So I encourage you to be here uh, on uh, Saturday at six o'clock. So nothing Wednesday, we'll put it on Saturday and then we'll have worship on Sunday morning. Next Sunday morning is worship only. So we won't have small group Bible study time uh, just our worship at 1030. Now, something else is going to happen this week, even though we're not having Wednesday night uh, activities here at the church, during the day on Wednesday, some of you may have an appointment that's been set up uh, with for, for the uh, church directory pictures. And we, we went through all of that, you know, last weekend, getting our pictures made. Now we got to come back and and view those and, um, and pick which ones you like and all of that. So some of you have appointments on Tuesday and some on Wednesday. Please be sure you make those appointments because, uh, for one thing, our ability to receive, to, to get the, uh, the church directories um, at no cost to the church depends on how many of our folks come in and show up for those appointments to, uh, to view your picture. So be sure and, and keep your appointments for that. And, um, and by the way, I just want to pause and, and I want to say a special thank you to April Palmer. <laughs> Listen, you have no idea how much work goes into trying to make these appointments, make those phone calls every member of cross baptist church got a phone call it got contacted by uh, by april and that that took a lot of time and effort and she sat through and she registered people as they came through and and thank you april that what a tremendous job i, I appreciate you so much and and that's going to be something that uh, we'll we'll have for years to come that uh, that church directory so one other thing just be reminded that year-end giving um is you know, the cutoff for that, because the way uh, New Year's Eve falls on a Saturday this year, and so if you're going to get your year-end gifts in, you need to get them here by that Friday, uh, so they can be counted in this year's giving. So, Sylvia will greatly appreciate that if, if you want those on this year's um, uh, figures uh, that, that you keep. So, anyway, um, year-end giving by December the 30th. All right, and of course, don't forget our pregnancy center uh, collection that we're, we're taking out here of the scratch, uh, baby scratch mittens. And there's a little tree out there. We're decorating that tree with those mittens we're going to give away to our pregnancy center. So anyway, uh, one last thing. If you're a guest with us today, we sure do appreciate you worshiping with us. And we'd love to have a record of your visit with us. And the way we do that is with a connection card because we want to connect with you. And uh, there's a card like this in your pew there somewhere nearby there in front of you. And if you could uh, take that, drop that off of one of the guys headed out the door when we leave. And uh, we'll be able to connect better with you. Um, we want to hear from you. We want to know what prayer requests you have. So be sure to use the back side of that card and, and let us know how we can be praying for you. And that applies to everybody, not just our guests, but all of us. If you have a prayer request and you need to get that to 
the pastor's desk. You want that to get to me, circle pastor only. And it won't get on our, our regular printout that we do on Wednesday nights when we pray through our, our prayer list. But if you have a special need you, you want the pastor to be praying for, mark that and it will get to me. And that will be in, in, in my prayer list. So thank you for that. I look forward to um, all that we have today to worship the Lord. Uh, and in fact, we're going to begin with just uh, uh, singing uh, uh, His praise and His glory. So praise Him. You guys will come on. We're going to sing um, a song that will that'll, that'll get you up and get you going. You ready? Mighty is our God. Mighty is our King. He's ruler of everything. Let's stand together as we sing. Mighty is our God, mighty is our King, mighty is our Lord, He's ruler of everything. Glory to our God, glory to our King, glory to our Lord, ruler of everything.
But Jesus came to lay up our souls. We long for joy every single day of the year. The kind of joy that still lingers when there's no light, when the gifts from the world have stopped, and the music just sounds like noise. God gave us an unexpected joy that fills empty spaces and is easy to find if we're willing to look. It's a joy that crosses boundaries and breaks down walls, that finds the lonely on hilltops in the curious and faraway lands. It delights in our mind into unexpected places and circumstances, like a manger in a little town called Bethlehem. Let me, Lord, spread that kind of joy to the world. Amen. Today we celebrate the message of joy that is found in the Christmas story. So many of the Christmas hymns and carols we sing remind us of the great joy that surrounds the season. We often hear songs like Joy, Joyful. Uh, we adore, it says, we adore thee, or joy to the world, the Lord has come, or how great our joy is. And joy is an expression of our hearts when we are filled with a great sense of happiness, pleasure, delight, or wonder. But real joy goes beyond simply the immediate circumstances that may bring happiness. And God's joy can be experienced even when life seems unpleasant, difficult, or sad. In fact, Scripture says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. In Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, it says, Joy is a gift from God that sustains us even in the trials of life. Scripture says that while the hard times of life may seem like the dark of night, joy comes in the morning. In Psalms chapter 30, verse 5, Excuse me. The Bible even tells us that a joyful heart is good medicine to the soul. In Proverbs 17, 22, we hope that Christmas season you will experience the joy of the Lord and that you will share this joy with those around you. And may his peace, love, and joy be yours today and every day because he has come. And how great our joy, Christ the Savior, has come. And if you don't mind, everybody, please bow your heads with me for this last saying prayer. As a Father in heaven, thank you for your joy. Thank you for giving your Son so that we can experience the joy that comes in knowing you. We recognize that the sorrows of this life may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. We remember the joy announced by angels at the birth of the, jo of the Lord Jesus. We also remember the great sorrow that came by the death of Jesus on the cross. But joy came in the morning of his glorious resurrection. And help us to live in the joy of Christ's resurrection today and every day of the year. We, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
the prophet Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14, prophesied of one day the Lord would, would give us a son. Isaiah 7, 14, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign so the virgin will conceive and have a son and name him Emmanuel. The praise team will come. We'll continue singing. The Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23 again quotes that same text from the Old Testament. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, shall bring forth the son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. As we sing this morning, we sing of our Emmanuel, the one who has come, the one who is God with us. So let's stand together and sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel.
you'll turn with me this morning, Luke chapter 2. Once again, we will... Children's Church, yes. Time with Children's Church. Go with Miss Melissa this morning. Awesome. Great. Thanks for the reminder. Now Luke chapter 2, again, at our springboard for our sermon series during this Christmas season has been from the message of the angels to the shepherds in the field where we find in verse 8, the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields, keeping watch at night over their flock. And what we've done in our sermon series, we've kind of broken down some of the the message from the angels in, in its parts. And so verse 9 says, the angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid. Fear not. For look, I proclaim to you good news of what? Great joy. And it shall be for all people. Today in the city of David was born for you a a Savior was born for you as the Messiah of the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You'll find the babe wrapped in uh, tightly in cloth and, and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was that multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel praising God and saying glory to God in the highest. In the highest heaven and peace on earth to people that he favors. Father, thank you for these words. And a few minutes as we dig a little deeper into what this means for us. I pray that you would help us to, to really get a sense of, of the awe and the wonder and the joy that this season brings to our lives because Emmanuel has come. Thank you for that holy night when Christ was born. In his name we pray. Amen.
so much, Miss Shirley. A beautiful song. One of my favorites of the Christmas season. Oh, holy night. The uh, Christmas season, as we've talked about this morning with our Advent candle and scripture reading, and the song that we just have heard, speak of joy and rejoicing. I think one of the, the great joys of the Christmas season, probably for all of us, is in the eyes of our children. Wouldn't you say that? I mean, you, you live for that Christmas morning when, when the kids get to come in and, and, and get those gifts that, you know, I have to admit, as, as a child, did, did you ever sneak around under the tree? and What is in this thing? I mean, I, I sometimes just couldn't stand it, right? I, just, I, I gotta know what, where, what's, what is this gift? And then finally, the moment arrives and, and it, like, you know, we were with my family yesterday in Mississippi and and, and the little ones, uh, you know, I've, I've got uh, great uh, nieces and nephews now. And, and those, those little ones, just the, the joy that was in their, their eyes as they opened those gifts. It's, it's just kind of contagious, isn't it? I probably would have really embarrassed Wesley if I had done this. But um, on, uh, you know, on Facebook, those of us that that have access to that and use that platform there's a there's a feature on there that will pull up memories it may be a year ago it may be 10 years ago depending on how long you've been on there and one of the things that that shannon posted a few years back was a picture of of graham and wesley in their christmas pajamas and i don't know you know what had happened i don't remember exactly how how the picture was taken other than wesley was so excited i don't know if maybe you know he got something from graham that was a gift or whatever but he just wrapped around graham and gave him the biggest bear hug and it just his face was all lit up and and shannon got that perfect picture of those two little guys just hugging and and wesley's just grinning ear to ear it's just that kind of joy that, that you, you want to capture in, in, in the children's eyes. Now, sometimes on our Facebook feed, those memories that pop up aren't so pleasant. In fact, as I, I was looking back through some things this week, and, and one of the things that popped up on, on my memories was actually a car accident that Shannon had just a couple of years ago. We were on our way to uh, one of Graham's wrestling matches, and we had met up, and because and, and, I had to be in one place, and Shannon had to be somewhere else, and so we we're going to meet together, and then we we're going to follow each other uh, to the, the wrestling match, and, and, and a car just... I'm, I'm sitting there right behind Shannon, and here comes this car, misses the turn, and just goes right in the side of Shannon's car. And I'm sitting there watching, there's nothing, it's one of those deals where there's nothing you can do about it, and you're seeing it happen before your eyes. You're like, no, and the crash. Fortunately, no one was injured. But I remember that, you know, here we are, this is a Christmas season, and we're, we've got all these thousand things to do, and now we've got a car wreck to deal with. I mean, nobody generally gets real excited about the trouble in life, do we? But trouble isn't always very far away. In fact, some people have described life's journey as a, as a series of uh, of moving from one difficult circumstance to another. That's a journey of life, as some people see it. But you know, I think maybe there, there's some 
some reason to that. And, and think about it like this. If we understand life and we can capture and view life from the lens of God, even in the difficult circumstances that we seem to, to move, journey from one to another to another and to another, and sometimes we're, we're like, when will this ever end? At the same time, we have to understand life this way, that, that God is allowing us to be refined by the fires of trouble so that we will come out shining like pure gold. Have you ever thought about it like that? The refiner's fire. You know, when they, when they find those gold nuggets in some creek bed or, or, or in a mine in, in the mountain and they pull those gold nuggets out, they don't rush that right down to the store, do they? No, it goes first to the refiner and, and they, they put that gold to the heat and, and it, it burns out the, the dross floats to the top, all the impurities that aren't supposed to be there. We want to get to the pure gold. And that's what Scripture says God does in our lives. It's like a refiner's fire. In fact, James chapter 1, we're going to come to this text in just a minute, but I just want to throw this out there to begin with. We're going to circle back to it. But James chapter 1, verse 2 says, Consider it great joy... My brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials, what? I mean, it, it, shouldn't it say when you experience all the, the good things in life? I mean, that, that's where joy comes from. Christmas morning, that, that's the, but it doesn't say that, does it? Let's consider it great joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials. In spiritual terms, what would pure gold look like? In spiritual terms, what would pure gold look like? I believe it would look like joy. It's more than happiness. It's, it's an attitude of our heart that has found a peace and a contentment in life that doesn't waver despite our circumstances. Joy is the ability to see life from God's perspective. Now think about this. As you read through the New Testament, do you ever see a place where Jesus is, is worried? Is... Uh, depressed, is, is overcome by the things of life. You know, you, here's what you find. Jesus was never fearful. He never worried. He, he, he was never reactive. He was calm in moments of trouble. He was poised under pressure. He was even loving toward his enemies when they were coming to put him to death. Do you remember in, in Luke chapter 22, the soldiers are coming to arrest Jesus there in the garden as he's been praying. And scripture says there in verse 50 that one of them, that is one of his disciples, Peter, struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus responded, no more of this. And touching his ear, he healed him. There was a, a peace and, and, and a joy that, that was about Jesus' life that allowed him to to be in control of his emotions, to remain faithful to the Father's will and plan and purpose every step along the way. 
So James says, as we read earlier, that when trials and troubles come, consider it an opportunity to express real Christ-like attitude in, in your life. In other words, be joyful. It really is a sign of, of Christian maturity. Um, children, children are known to sometimes throw tantrums. At least I know mine did and have and still do from time to time. No, just kidding. But the truth is, we expect that in a child, right? But God's Word tells us that we are to grow up into Christ's likeness, Ephesians chapter 4. So children throw tantrums when things don't go their, their way, but we're called to be Christ-like. We're called to maturity and, and to be a faithful witness as followers of Jesus. I, I listen to Christian radio a good bit as I'm traveling back and forth as, you know, maybe uh, a hospital visit, you know, you, just the things that, that, that I have to do and travel for and, and, and go in places. And, and I've always got some, some Christian radio going. And, and oftentimes there's some of the talk shows, Christian talk shows where people will call in. You ever listen to some of those? You get the call in and, 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 and you get this interaction between the, the, the Christian, um, radio host, whoever that is, and, and the program, and they're, they're interacting with, with people. So there's this particular radio show that I had heard some time ago, and I remembered this, about this phone call. And what really struck me is that I could hear the tangible evidence of a person that truly I believe was filled with God's grace. She was calling in to give a word of testimony about God's love and God's care. And there was such a genuine joy in her voice that it, it captured my attention as I listened. She said she was calling from the hospital. And she was a nurse. And so... Um, as she began to tell her story, I, I, I just figured she was going to talk about maybe one of her patients there in the hospital that had, where, where she had given some, some care to, or, or maybe how God had done something miraculous, and she wanted to give him glory. But as it turns out, the story was her story. And I just sat there amazed. I was moved emotionally more by the joy that I could hear in her voice than, than the story and the circumstances. She was in the hospital having just recovered from a surgical procedure to uh, treat ovarian cancer. But now she was calling from the hospital because she'd been diagnosed with breast cancer. She and her co-workers, uh, she said that, that her co-workers, the, the other nurses and, and the hospital staff, you know, encouraging her to, to be brave and be strong. But she said she recognized that the only strength she really had comes from her personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And she gave him glory for whatever the outcome might be. She had such a peace and joy that just exuded from, from those radio speakers as I listened. And it was a joy that, that only God can provide. But it was a, it was a joy that we can all achieve. No matter our circumstances. So, 
in the time we have remaining today, I want to I share with you just a few things you might want to jot down. Number one, number one, joy is an attitude to be achieved. Joy is an attitude to be achieved. Again, James 1 and verse 2, consider it great joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials. It's something that may not necessarily come naturally, and that's why it's something to be achieved. And he, James references brothers and sisters. Who is he talking to? His physical brothers and sisters? He's talking to the church. He said, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is commandment level stuff. Consider it great joy. Have joy in your life, even in the midst of trials. In fact, a couple other things in, in your outline. You might want to jot this down underneath number one there. Attitudes are a reflection of the heart. Attitudes are a reflection of the heart. Have you run into anybody kind of grumpy lately? It's a reflection of something that's going on inside, right? I mean, we, we have those days, we have those moments where we just physically, we don't feel good. Don't bother me. I don't feel good today. Or something has happened, some circumstances in our lives that happened you know, negatively that, that impact us emotionally and say, don't bother me. I don't feel good. I'm, things are going on in my life. It's just, you know, there's heart issues. There's issues that are deep within the soul and, and our countenance and what, what comes out of, of our mouths and is reflected in our facial expressions and our body expressions are, are reflective of what's deep in our heart. But here's something else to jot down. Joy can be realized regardless of circumstances. Joy can be realized regardless of what's going on in our life. In fact, to the Philippians, we've quoted this verse probably two or three times during the sermon series because we just kind of keep revolving back to this. In Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, Paul is writing to the believers there in Philippi, and he's saying to them that there's some attitude issues that I want you to address. You need to think about others. And we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. But here's the verse, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Have this mind in you. Some Bible translations, rather than the word mind, uh, use the word attitude. Have this attitude in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. In other words, however Jesus would have reacted, then we need to react. Whatever Jesus would have thought about this, we need to think about things in that way. Do you remember we used to wear the t-shirts and we used to have the bracelets? WW. Do you remember that? JD. And what did that stand for? What would Jesus do? In other words, as followers of him, we ought to be a reflection of, of what he would have done. We, in fact, scripture tells us we can have his very mind in us. How do you get the mind of Jesus in you? Well, number two in your outline, it's a gift. And since we're talking about joy, joy is a gift to be received. Not only is it an attitude to be achieved, it is a gift to be received. We read earlier in Luke chapter 2 and verse 10, the angel says to the shepherds, don't be afraid, for look, I'm proclaiming to you good news of what? Great joy. 
and it'll be for all people. In other words, God is giving a gift of joy that's supposed to go out to everybody. In Romans chapter 5 and, and verse 5. See, we can pull that one up on the screen there for us. Joy, uh, Romans 5 and verse 5. This hope, this hope that we have in Christ will not disappoint us. Because God's love has been what? Poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So just like in in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So the son was a gift. And that's why we celebrate Christmas. But when Jesus is, was about to ascend back to glory and he was teaching his disciples and he says, listen, the Holy Spirit is going to come on you. I'm going to leave the Holy Spirit. I'm going to give you the spirit to be with you and to help you and to teach you and remind you. And he's going to do some things in you. In fact, in Galatians chapter 5, Paul is helping the believers there in Galatia understand what, what is it about the Spirit? What is the Spirit doing in our lives? If God has poured out his love on us and given us the gift of his Spirit, what is the Spirit doing in us as he, as he indwells the believer? Well, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, the fruit of the Spirit is love, then what? Joy. I think, yeah, there, there you go, the scriptures are up there for you. So it's love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. All these things the Holy Spirit does in us, and they're fruits. And, and what do you do? What do you do with fruit? Where, where does fruit grow typically on a fruit tree? Out on the extremities. Why? It's out where it can be seen, out where it can be gathered, out where it can be can, can be cultivated. You know, when you when you harvest the fruits. It's when you know what kind of tree that is. You, apple trees don't produce oranges. Orange trees don't produce grapes. When the Holy Spirit, who is a gift from God in us, the kinds of fruit that he's going to produce is all these things, including joy. There's a couple of things we want to mention real quickly. By definition, a gift has both a giver and a recipient or a receiver. I mean, it just that's one of those duh statements, right? It's like, duh, of course. If you have a gift, there, there is a, a source of that gift. That gift is coming from somewhere. And that gift is going to someone, there's a giver and there's a recipient. But get this, jot this one down. It is possible that a gift may be given, but never received. It's kind of funny, yesterday in, in our family gathering, we, we did uh, the, uh, well, some people don't like to call it this, it Dirty Santa. You ever played that game before? <laughs> and so anyway, uh, we, we had this game. Uh, you, know, you exchange gifts, and then there's, there's this opportunity to go and, and, and get somebody else's gift after you've done some of these exchanges. But I had, we were going to do this with Shannon's family of several years ago. And um, literally on Christmas Eve, I believe it was Christmas Eve, uh, Shannon's nephew suddenly passed away and everything, you know, got called off. I mean, it was just rushed to the hospital. Um, it was just, was, we couldn't get the family together. Um, anyway, so I had purchased a gift to put in the game. 
And that gift sat on my shelf now, what, three, four years? The gift was purchased. The gift was ready to be given. It was just never received. God gave a gift of his own son. The greatest gift that could ever be given. And the sad reality is there's a world full of people who need Jesus. And the gift has already been given. They, they've yet to receive. Yet to receive. There's something else about this gift of joy, though. You see, you might want to jot this down. This is the, the last Number three for your outline is this. Joy is the evidence of God's love to be expressed to the world. It, it's evidence of, of God's love for us when we express to the world around us our great joy in what God has done for us. And not just on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve, but throughout the year. 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning of verse 8, says this. Um, I think we'll have that up on the screen for you too. 1 Peter 1 and verse 8 and following, 8 and 9. Though you have not seen him. So Peter's writing to believers who had never physically seen Christ themselves, but because of the, the story of the gospel, just like none of us have have. We weren't at the cross. We weren't at the, at the tomb on the, on the morning of, of, of the discovery of an empty tomb on, on that Easter morning. We weren't there to be eyewitnesses, but we've received the witness of those who were. And by faith, we believe, right? That's how we come to Christ. And that's what Peter is saying to the believers that he's writing to there in 1 Peter. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though not seeing him now, you believe in him. And get this. And you rejoice with inexpressible and glorious, what? Joy. Because you're receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. What is Peter saying? Say, listen, if you're saved, you ought to be rejoicing in that every day. It ought to be that the world around us sees it as something different, something, something worth going after. Worth, you know, you've got something I don't have and I want that. What is it? Well, let me tell you, it's Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Um, the Apostle Paul said it this way, he says, We want you to know, brothers and sisters, about the grace of God that was given to the churches of Macedonia during a severe trial brought about by affliction. And their abundant joy and their extreme poverty overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. Why do we bring that up? Because this is a season of, of gifts and, and of giving. And we're talking about receiving what God has given us and expressing that to the world around us. And that's what the believers in Macedonia had done. They had gone through some, some very difficult seasons in their life. Extreme poverty. And what did Paul say about them? Yet in their abundant joy. You know what they had done in their joy? They had received an offering. In their poverty, they, they gave a collection because they wanted to help some people who were worse off than they were. And as bad as it was for them, what was going on in Jerusalem during that time was even worse. Severe drought and persecution were devastating people's lives. And so the, the believers in Macedonia collected uh, uh, an offering to, to send through the Apostle Paul to the believers in, in Jerusalem. Now, now I want to, let, let's wrap this up this way. You might want to jot this down. Others may not receive your joy. Others may not receive the joy that, that you want to give. Have you ever encountered that? 
I mean, I want to give the gospel away, and there have been plenty of times when I've tried to share the gospel, and, and I've been cut off. Nope, I don't want to hear that. Nope, not interested. Don't, don't, don't tell me about all that. I don't want your religion. And usually I'll say, well, that's great. I don't want to tell you about my religion. I want to tell you about a relationship that I have with Jesus Christ. But some people don't want to receive your joy. But get this, don't let that rob you of God's blessing. In other words, give it anyway. Just keep giving it anyway. Matthew 5, 16, Jesus said it this way, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. So just keep doing it anyway. Let your light shine. Let the joy of of your life shine even in difficult circumstances even when somebody doesn't receive that joy give it anyway there's one more thing about joy it's it's the kind of gift that keeps on giving joy is a gift that keeps on giving we talked about how it's kind of contagious when we see that in in the eyes of our children and and we you know you see a smile a, a child just smiling ear to ear and you just can't help it, it it's just going it all of a sudden, it's on your face, right? And we're just smiling, and, and we're joyful because of the, the joy they're experiencing. It's kind of contagious. And, and so when God poured out his love for us by giving us the Lord Jesus and by pouring out his love through the indwelling Holy Spirit, the idea was never for us to keep that to ourselves. Everyone may not receive the gift that we have to give to the world, and everyone will not, may not receive what God has so graciously given, but keep giving anyway. Keep trusting that God will use our good gifts and our good attitude and that gift of joy. And, and that'll be a gift that, that'll keep on giving. It'll be contagious. And, and others will see the, the light of Christ shining from you. And God will get the glory. Let's bow together as we pray. In just a moment, we're going to sing a, a song, a hymn of, of invitation. And today, we invite you to come in, in response to what God has done for you. Do you know him as your own personal Lord and Savior today? Have you received that greatest gift? A relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Maybe it's that you want to spend some time just pouring yourself out before God and saying, God, I I want this joy in my heart. Forgive me for allowing the circumstances of life to, to rob me of joy when, when you have freely given and poured out yourself into me. And the Holy Spirit and the gift and the fruit of that Spirit is love and joy and peace. Maybe today you just want to rededicate your life to bearing that kind of fruit for the world to see around us. Maybe today you'd like to join together with this body of believers at Cross Baptist Church. Be part of the family and reach our community for Christ. Whatever decision God may be, working in your heart today I invite you to come as we sing in just a moment Father we've read from your word we've seen how joy is all over scriptures and that you've even commanded us to, to have this mind in us which was also in Jesus a mind of, of joy peace and love Help us to respond today faithfully. Because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let's stand together as we sing.